hello guys you're welcome to another one of my videos and in this video I am going to be showing you guys how to set up your sublime text editor for optimal programming so what do I mean by optimal programming well that doesn't actually uh, mean anything to me either but uh, we're gonna be setting up sublime text so that we can actually uh, you know use it as a development environment now a couple of things to note about sublime text sublime text is not a full-fledged ide which means that there's some features that are going to be missing uh, some ide specific features for example mostly um things like debugging uh you know stepping through code i don't it's probably it's probably possible that you can do that but i highly doubt it i don't think i've ever seen anyone debug code in sublime text but i don't really think you want to do that um, that's specific to IDs and you know we don't really want to do things that make our programming um, you know iteration or you know working time slow so in this video I wanted to show you my own environment setup for um, you know basically my preferences and settings um, so the first thing I have is the plugins alright so for plugins I have the LSP um, package installed um, LSP plugin all right so if i go to package control list packages so you can see that a couple of things i have installed i have dart light this is for dart um you know if you if you write flutter or dart code you're basically gonna have that we also have the flutter enhancements i don't think i've ever really ever used this i don't really know what the plugin is for but i had to install it you know just in case it's useful i don't really write calling code i don't really know why i have this i'm probably gonna remove it very soon um so this is this is the most important plugin inside of here all right so we have the lsp package all right so the lsp the lsp plugin i keep calling it package it's plugin all right so the lsp plugin is what implements the language server protocol for sublime text if you don't know what the language server protocol is it's basically something that allows you to interact with what is called a language server and uh, the language server is going to give you uh, code completion uh linting error reporting um, you know formatting and basically all the basic things that you can find inside of an IDE inside your text editor so a language server is what is implemented for sublime text that allows you to do a bunch of all of those things so as you can see I have a bunch of LSP plugins that uh, a bunch of plugins that I've installed that actually um, works with this LSP package uh, LSP plugin all right so we have the LSP bash which is just for bash um, support you know syntax aligning um, code completion editing and a bunch of other things like that we have the LSP dart which is what I use for writing um, you know that helps me with the language server protocol implementation for um, the dart and flutter package and it works really great it works well I love it and you also have the one for HTML so everything you might need for HTML support in sublime text is there we also have the one for Vue which is for Vue.js if you do web development we have the YAML, well YAML, YAML, what else do you want me to say about that, that's just YAML uh, then you know a bunch of other things like color schemes and you know themes and things like that um, we also have this which is, uh, I don't really know what this is, Rust Auto Import, I don't think I've ever used that before we have the TOML which is just for, because I write Rust code and Rust uses you know the TOML format so I had to restore that for syntax, for syntax highlighting and um, so yeah, so a bunch of other things like that I don't think this is all the packages I have installed. I think this is all the packages I have installed. But trust me, I have a bunch of other things that I've that I am actually using to make all of this work properly. All right. And just to uh, reiterate a good point, if you go to the Sublime LSP, um, because I don't actually use all all programming languages in existence. So here is a website for the Sublime Text LSP plugin. So you can find that it supports a lot of languages. That you can use inside of your sublime text all right so a couple of them I already have installed so if you want to use angular so as you can see i picked off bash from here by some c c plus plus so you might be wondering how to set up your c plus um, uh, uh, pl uh, plug in linting or whatever and it already works just to show you what i'm trying to say here if i try to create a new file i'm just going to say like you know work.cpp i'm just going to put it in the home directory uh why the hell not uh, get out of my face all right so i'm just gonna save that and then you can see that i can already um is it void or int i think it's int all right okay so as you can see here we have everything we need 
and as you can see it already has uh what is it called it has a bunch of things already available for us so for example if i write something that doesn't actually make any sense like for example std string uh you know it's been a while i've actually used c++ so i think i need to include io string just like that so you can see there's already code completion and you can see there's also linkedin and a bunch of other things like that so i can have something like auto string equals to std string uh you know i'm just gonna create a new string as you can see there's a bunch of things like um um as you can see here we, can, we have what is called um what the hell is this thing called um it's called hover okay so when you hover you have type information for example you see a string of blah 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 car so so basically and you can see it also has code action and a bunch of other things but as you can see it's not part of what i installed in the, as the plugins so yeah but so why does this work exactly well this works because i followed the C, C++ guide so basically everything you need you're gonna find here but just to be clear this is not actually clear enough the instructions look kind of weird and you might not understand what they're trying to say here but i recommend if you want to set up your C, C++ environment for sublime text you don't read this because you're not really gonna get what it's saying but the point of this um get, get back in there so the point of this um page is to just tell you what to install so if you already have the clang tools or clang d or whatever so basically you need llvm and clang installed and also you need the clang d i think it's clang d yeah so you need the clang d and uh, what else do you need i feel like that's all you need right so you need just the clang d so once you have clang d installed you're pretty much okay and once you have clang d installed what you have to do is i'm gonna find preferences uh, i think it's lsp settings yeah so go to lsp settings and this is where all of my lsp settings uh live so you can see i have the format on save which means every uh, language server that um that everything that implements the language server with particular language is going to format my file and save and i also have these to remove the sublime text snippet completions because sublime text you know gives me some completions that are actually extremely useless to what i'm doing and so i decided to completely remove that and use just whatever lsp gives me so you may want or may not want this so you can add that if you want as you can see if you remember how i did it i just come i just came here and go to preferences lsp settings but make sure you have the lsp plugin installed before you can do that all right so the next thing we i did was i have as you can see i have this rust analyzer so this one is for rust so if you want to set up your environment for rust programming which i already did uh you just have this rust analyzer you have command rust analyzer enabled and true and that's all you need this is all you need to set up um rust support inside of your uh what is it called um there's also a package i think uh rust i think right so i think there's a there's a package there, there's a there's a bunch of um package if i can find that uh package control yeah list packages so uh i think this is only the rust that are import anyway so i have the rust analyzer set up here and it works pretty well I don't think I have anything else I did and just to be clear I copied some of them from here this is the one that came with the LSP whatever and so it has a bunch of clients that it already has support for uh -huh, right here so you can see that the client so I found a client for rust uh, yeah so default clients as you can see here so you already I think it already implements a bunch of all of this for the, for this client so you just have to copy and paste them here so what I did was I copied the Rust Analyzer and for Rust there's a bunch of other things you have to set up for example you have to make sure that your Rust Analyzer binary is installed uh, so if you have if you download a Rust Analyzer on your, your own Windows then you basically have to provide a path to a Rust Analyzer here and then set enable to true and you're pretty much done all right so for client D, as you can see, so all of these, uh, all of these default clients are not enabled by default. So you have to do that yourself, and that's why you have to come here and add them as manually. All right. So for Dart, what I did for Dart was, um, so if you install the LSP Dart, LSP Dart plugin, then you should be able to do this. All right. Um, I think if you install the LSP Dart plugin, then that will, that will already be enabled for you. But I can't really remember why I have this, but maybe you should do that too. Okay, I think I remember now, probably because I have this, this. 
anyway it's gonna work either way just make sure that when you have your LSP dart installed uh, what you need to do is what the hell is that uh, LSP dart it doesn't really show up here I think I showed you how to do that in the last video so when I, where I talked about setting up sublime text for further development so you can check out that video and so but I have this I don't know why I did but I'm gonna keep it anyways just to make sure that everything still works now this is for the C++ as you can see so um, C++ and you can see I have Clang D so make sure you have Clang D installed and if you want the command if you have Clang D installed somewhere that is not in your executable path then you're gonna have to provide the full path to your Clang D as you can see it says you might use an absolute path for this Clang D executable function argument place with us says I don't know what the hell this means header insertion decor decorators I guess this is zero means no one means yes so it means yeah anyway it doesn't really matter I don't care about this right uh, so this is basically how I set up my development environment so it's basically based around the LSP package so once you have it installed I recommend you come back here and check it out for whatever um, programming language you want to um, work with there's a bunch there's a whole lot of programming languages here as you can see and a lot of support for you know various types and um, you know formats and things like that I really love the rust approach for me I think the support for rust is a lot much much more better than um, the one available inside of um, uh, it's, it's much better than the one available inside of the what the hell is it called much better than the one available inside of so inside of Visual Studio code so I think that's really important right so um, so I think there's your rust LSP rust analyzer now I think when I when I wanted to install my I didn't really find this or maybe I just didn't want it but I don't really think you need to install any LSP rust analyzer but you could do that if you want I guess you know it's not gonna cost you any harm uh, rust analyzer yeah so you can install that if you want but my rust already works so i'm not really gonna do that i don't want to do that anymore because it already works oh my god i think i'm gonna do that because i'm just seeing a run button right here and i've never seen that before oh my god i'm gonna do that right now so i'm gonna install that <coughs> lsp rust analyzer right so make sure you check your documentation as you can see i just found a package that i really didn't have before and now I'm gonna install it because it looks awesome. I uh, hope that is installed. I guess it should be. Uh, just to make sure. Um, what the hell? So I can find a run button here, which is amazing. Wow. So LSP Rust. Yeah, that's already installed. And so if I open up my Rust, um, whatever, let me just find a Rust library that I have been working with to play <coughs> excuse me um, this one does this one have like a, an executable in it um, okay so checking out the settings inside of here oh my god this is a lot so right here you can see that Rust Analyzer even bundles its own um, Rust Analyzer binary which is not really something that I like but I guess I could uh, live with that for now. Uh, I don't really know. But I'm going to find out if this actually makes a difference. So let's see. Uh, what if I had a, like a... I'm going to create a new project just to check this out. Right now, right now. Um, um, cargo new bin, you know, let's be rust. And let's see what happens. Sublime text. LSP Rust. Just want to see what I'm gonna get if I'm working with the LSP Rust Analyzer. Um, to close this. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is really amazing. Um, so you can see that just creating a new project, I have the run and debug button here. Wow, this is crazy. Now uh, let me try to debug because I, I don't really think I've ever seen uh, an ability to uh, debug something. Okay, so it says I need the terminals package. So get out of my face. I need the terminals package. Um, let's do that. Let's install terminals. I think I tried to install terminals uh, one time, but it didn't really work. Um, maybe two times a charm. 
let's see okay so terminus is installed I'm gonna try to hit the run button again and it says you need to install a terminus package and then restart sublime text oh that's cool so I'm gonna have to close and restart it don't worry sublime text is pretty fast so it's not really gonna take much time to do that um, if I'm even gonna be able to do that at all right so let's be roused again let's go back here go to buy to source and main.rs um, so what I'm looking at is the um, so I have the run button showing up somewhere here okay for the main function which means that I can actually do the same for the what is it called I can do the same for the sublime uh, the LSP dart package so I'm gonna try to see if I can implement that because I really like it when there's a run and debug button here so as you can see we have the run and debug so I'm gonna try to click on debug and it says debug single failed oh my god let's try to run come on terminus package is installed I don't really know what's going on here, but I have terminus installed. Uh, does it even work? Oh, it works. Terminus now works. This is cool. But it's saying that I need to maybe I because I have this open. Uh, I'm gonna open this again just to make sure that this works. Okay, so after restarting my um, Sublime Text, this actually works now, and I get hello work. Wow. This is amazing. This means that I don't actually have to go to my terminal to run my program anymore. This is crazy. Wow. And I think I found something like, um, you know, I think is uh, expand macro recursively. So, <clears throat> so this is another cool thing because I, I, I'm currently experimenting with procedural macros in Rust. So I like the fact that this allows me to just expand my macro. I think this is using like cargo expand or something. As you can see here, this is actually work. This is really cool. Anyway, that's all. Uh, so how do I take this off? Uh, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this is gonna be troublesome. But anyway, so I'm gonna try to debug again and see if that makes a difference. I don't know if that will make a difference. Uh, the run definitely will. Okay, this is macro expansion. I can close this. All right, all right. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay, so it says unknown request. All right, so it looks like only run works for now, uh, but that's fine. That's okay. Uh, I can work with that. If I want to debug, you know, I'm just gonna use like GDB or whatever, or LLVM. But mostly in Rust, we don't debug programs. You, um, the compiler is good enough to, you know catch most of our things at compile time but anyway that'll be all for this video um so that's how you set up your development environment in raw uh, development environments in sublime text you basically um use the lsp package uh, the lsp plugin and then you put uh, most of the uh, you know stuff right on top of it right so you can find the lsp plugin somewhere around somewhere around where Somewhere around here, so you have the LSP, the sublime text.io, and then slash language server. So, I'm going to leave a link to this um, site in the description. So, if you want to set up your development environment for sublime text, you can do that. And that will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.